In this video, we are going to cover everything you need to know about the cost of backpacking in New Zealand. Everything about transportation, cost of life, accommodation, epic activities, and on top of that, we'll cover everything you need to know about a working holiday visa in New Zealand and what that it costs. And as a bonus, we'll give you heaps of tips on how to save ton of money on the way. All of that coming right up in this video. the team behind backpackerguide.nz helping you plan an epic backpacking trip in New Zealand. In this video we are going to be talking about how expensive it is to travel around New Zealand and how to budget for the perfect backpacking trip down under. We're going to be talking about everything you need to know and giving you heaps of tips on how to save money along the way. And as a bonus, at the end, we'll cover the cost of a working holiday visa in New Zealand. But before we begin, remember that every prices that we're going to give you in this video are going to be New Zealand dollars. We'll put a link in the description below to a converter so you can convert it into your own currency. Before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can join our backpacker squad and make the most of your trip in New Zealand. First things first, what costs can you expect before arriving in New Zealand? Well, the first thing that you're going to be spending money on is going to be your big ticket item. That's your flight to New Zealand. And expect to be paying between 1,000 to 2,000 New Zealand dollars for a flight to New Zealand with Air New Zealand. But that depends on a lot of different factors, such as your country of departure, as well as the time of the year that you are flying. For this very reason, we have a complete article on NZ that with everything you need to know about flying into New Zealand, as well as heaps of tips on how to save money. I'll be nice and put a link for you guys in the description below. Another thing you want to consider is your visa cost. If you're coming in New Zealand as a tourist, you have nothing to pay. There is going to be a levy when entering New Zealand, that's going to be between $20 to $25, but that's only going to kick in around mid-2018. If you're coming in New Zealand on a working holiday visa, you will have to purchase your working holiday visa, and that's around 200 New Zealand dollars. We have a complete section of this video dedicated to the working holiday visa cost, and that's coming around the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. Finally, before leaving your home country, you're going to want to sort out your travel insurance. If you want to do that on the cheap, get yourself a credit card that includes a travel insurance. This comes to no cost to you guys, so that's pretty handy. If you want more protection though, you can get yourself an insurance between two to 500 New Zealand dollars, depending on your length of stay and what you want to be covered. Again, if you're coming on a working holiday visa in New Zealand, it is mandatory for you guys to get yourself a comprehensive medical and travel insurance. To do that, we have done a lot of research for you guys and we like the company called Orbit Protect. We like them because they're New Zealand based, so they really know the market and also they cover the stopovers as well. So if you decide to stop for a few days in Australia, you're covered. That's pretty sweet. The cost is between 200 to 400 New Zealand dollars for a cover that will last the whole year. All right, next up on our list is what is the cost of transportation in New Zealand? The most extensive public transport network in New Zealand are the bus networks. So the cheapest way to travel around New Zealand would be to take the national coaches like Intercity or Manor Bus. And to give you a typical idea of prices for a four hour trip, this would be between 20 to 40 New Zealand dollars. If you want a bus trip with a bit more inclusions, then consider taking the hop-on hop-off buses around New Zealand, like Kiwi Experience or Flying Kiwi. And the typical prices for those are between 1,000 to 3,000 New Zealand dollars, and that's for a national pass lasting all year round. And then finally, there are all-inclusive bus tours, which you can imagine cost a lot more, usually between 4,000 to 5,000 New Zealand dollars. If you are staying in New Zealand for more than two months, the most cost-effective way for you to make your way around the country is going to be to purchase your own car. We have a complete video detailing everything you need to know about that very process and we'll put a link in the description below. But cost-wise, expect to pay between 1,500 New Zealand dollars and 5,000 New Zealand dollars to purchase a car in New Zealand and expect to pay between 2,500 New Zealand dollars and 10,000 New Zealand dollars if you want to get yourself a self-contained camper van. 
Alternatively, if you're staying in New Zealand for a little less time, then you can always rent a car or a camper van. Again, we have a full video describing everything you need to know about renting a car or camper van in New Zealand. Again, we will link that up in the description. But for a typical price idea, which really depends on the time of year you are traveling, the price for a car would be between 19 to 150 New Zealand dollars. Um, and for a camper van, that would be between 50 New Zealand dollars to 450 New Zealand dollars, really depending what type of camper van you are getting. But no matter what you choose, you will be subject to the cost of gas. Expect to pay between $1.70 and $2 for a liter of petrol. That's a liter, guys, not a gallon and expect to pay about $1.35 for a litre of diesel. But on top of that, you will have to pay a road user charges for each kilometre that you will drive in a diesel vehicle, making diesel vehicles more expensive to run than petrol cars, so stick to petrol. Another cost that almost everybody is going to have is going to be the ferry crossing. That's around 200 New Zealand dollars for one car and two passengers. Alternatively, you may want to take a flight around New Zealand and there is heaps of destination ranging from $120 to $240. You can get yourself a good deal on selected websites and we have a full article on that very subject on backpackguide.nz and the link, guess it, is in the description below. Finally, train are an option in New Zealand. A lot of people forget about them but we have some awesome train rides in the country. Actually the three main train rides that we have here are ranked in the top 25 most beautiful rides in the world and the price ranges between $100 and $220. Next up, what is the price of accommodation in New Zealand? But well, the first thing that comes to mind is hostels because most of you guys are going to be using hostels as your main accommodation in New Zealand for the length of your trip. Expect to pay between 20 to 35 New Zealand dollars for a bed in a dorm and that will depend on the size of the dorm as well as the location of your hostels. If you want a bit more private or kinky time, expect to pay between 70 and 85 dollars for a private room and for that price you may even be able to stay in a motel. If you are traveling New Zealand by camper van or with a tent, then you'll want to stay in campsites, which can range from being free of charge to holiday parks, which are usually up to 20 New Zealand dollars per person for a tent site or a powered site for a camper van. All right, your other options for accommodation include freedom camping. To do that, you need a self-contained camper van and you need to research where you actually can park and sleep. You can also use Airbnb, which is extremely popular in New Zealand, but the prices are all over the place, so we're not going to venture guessing prices. You can also use Woofing, which is working for accommodation that is only for people on a working holiday visa. And you can also use Couchsurfing, which is crashing on the stranger's couch. Next up on our list, what is the cost of food and drinks in New Zealand? Obviously, if you're traveling on a budget, the cheapest way to have food and drink in New Zealand is to make it yourself in your hostel or your campsite. So let's have a look at our New Zealand shopping list to see some typical food prices. First up, pasta. That's between one and two dollars a pack. What about rice per kg? That's about two dollar fifty a pack. Bread. That's between one dollar to three dollars per loaf. Eggs by the dozen. That's between three to seven dollars. Cheese per 1 kg Between 8 and 12 dollars A litre of milk Between 2 to 3 dollars Apples per kg I'd say between 3 to 4 dollars Potatoes per kg That's 2 to 4 dollars And onions 1.5 to 2.5 dollars Chicken between 8 to 15 dollars a kg and beef between 10 to 20 dollars a kg but if your girlfriend is like Laura and cook really bad you don't have to eat her food you can go out and eat really well a pizza takeaway between 5 and 10 dollars um, main in a restaurant is going to be between 20 to 30 dollars uh, cafe is going to be about 5 to 6 dollars for a sandwich and 4 dollars for a drink and if you really need to forget how bad she cooks, you can go out and a pint of beer is going to be $8 and a shot is going to be 4 to $5. And now, what are the prices of activities in New Zealand? Wait, wait, wait. You don't have to break the bank to have an awesome time in New Zealand. World-class hike, stunning beaches, amazing sceneries, glorious hot pools, and even the best museum in New Zealand, the Te Papa Museum in Wellington, are totally free. But if you're willing to spend a little bit of money and have some thrilling fun, here's my bucket list and some prices. 
First up, I want skydive 15,000 feet. That's between 339 to 439 New Zealand dollars. I'm too scared for it, but I want you to bungee jump and me laughing at you. That's up to 260 New Zealand dollars. Whitewater rafting? That's between 100 to 160. A thrilling jet boat? That's between 80 to 150. Swimming with wild dolphins? That's around 160 New Zealand dollars. Whale watching? Whale watching is around $150. Hiring a kayak for a day in the Albert Tasman National Park? That's around 125. Heli hike on top of one of New Zealand's glacier? That's between $200 and $300. Cruising in the world famous Milford Sound? That's not too expensive, that's around $40 to $70. Visiting one of Rotorua's geothermal wonderland? That's between $30 to $70. Horse trekking? Horse trekking is around $100 to $150. Canyoning? Canyoning is around $150 to $300. Nerding out in Hobbiton? At the time of filming it is currently at $79. Daydreaming in one of the Glowon Cave? That is between $200 to $250. That's for caving, right? For caving, yeah. And doing one of New Zealand's Great Walk. And the Great Walk huts at the moment, they're between $32 to $90 New Zealand dollars. So now we're moving on to the working holiday section of our costs in New Zealand video. So what extra costs are involved in a working holiday in New Zealand? Well, first up, there is all the costs that we mentioned before, such as your flight, your working holiday visa for about 200 New Zealand dollars, and your medical and travel insurance. But I want to add one more to this beginning of the list. It's a working holiday program. A lot of people decide to go through a working holiday program that usually set up your bank account, your IRD number, give you a phone, and plenty of other services because they want peace of mind. This is usually a great way to start your trip without any stress, but that comes as a cost. Usually between between 400 and 700 New Zealand dollars. However, if you decide to do everything on your own, you are super brave and we have a video for you. In the description below, we link to a complete video on how to get started on the working holiday visa in New Zealand and we're walking you through the every single step ourselves. Next up, what is the cost of finding a job in New Zealand? To find a job in New Zealand, it's really easy and super cheap. In fact, we have a video about that very subject coming out really soon. So make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as it comes out. And if you're watching us in the future, look in the description below, there is a link for you. In the meantime, Look on backpackerguide.nz for jobs, it's the biggest job board for backpackers in New Zealand and there is also heaps of articles on how to do your CV, how to look for a job and how to prepare for an interview in New Zealand. So some typical prices that might be involved in the job search process could be a membership to the Woofing organization. Now Woofing is working for accommodation and the price to be a member is around 40 New Zealand dollars. But if you decide to get a real job and go around town handing out CVs, then printing a page is usually around 50 cents per page. And to also access the internet and a computer, that's usually between two to four dollars. Next up, what is the cost of commuter travel in New Zealand? Well, only the biggest city of New Zealand will have public transport, so in some occasion you will have to have your own car to get to work. In the meantime, public transport are actually pretty cheap. If you only take the bus, you will be paying between $1 to $3 for a bus ticket, but that'll be about three times that in Queenstown. If you want to take the train, it's between two to four dollars for a ticket. And if you miss the bus or the train and have to take a cab, it's about four dollars per kilometer. All right, if you stay in New Zealand long enough, you're gonna to wanna to get connected, right? So what are the prices of phone network in New Zealand? There are several phone networks. There are Spark, Skinny, Two Degrees, and Vodafone. Now the most cost-effective option is to get a prepaid phone plan, in other words pay as you go, and we personally prefer Skinny because we find they are the cheapest, the most flexible and have most coverage around New Zealand. However, if you check out backpackerguide.nz for our phone network comparison, you can find the right network for your needs. Price-wise, if you decide to buy a prepay bundle, you will get about 100 minutes, unlimited text and 500 megabytes of data for about 20 bucks and that usually lasts for a month. Otherwise, 
Minutes are about 20 cents, text are about 9 cents, and megabytes of data are between 50 cents and 1 dollar. So you can spend all your time on your phone on backpackerguide.nz. And last question of the day, what is the cost of long-term accommodation in New Zealand? So on your working holiday, you have found a place that you love, you have landed yourself a job, it is now time to get somewhere to live. It is more cost effective if you get long-term accommodation rather than paying the daily rates in a hostel. So here are your options. So if you decide to join a flat, you will be paying your rent every single week. So that will range between $100 to $250 a week. Expect to pay more than that for Queenstown and Auckland City Central. Remember also that when you're going to join a flat, you're going to probably have to pay a bond, which is a deposit that you have to give. So if you destroy the place, you're not getting it back when you're moving out. Other options include hostels, which almost all of them have a weekly price that range around $160. And if you are deciding to go woofing, which is working for accommodation, well, your accommodation is free in exchange of four hours of work a day. All right, guys, that rounds up the best guide that you will ever see about budgeting for a gap year in New Zealand. Seriously, we put so much work into it and I know you appreciate it. If you do, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you get all our next videos coming right up. We also are currently taking New Zealand's biggest gap year where we challenge ourselves to tackle 365 activities around New Zealand in only 365 days. It's absolutely epic and it will help you make a bucket list as big as mine wise in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, any costs that we haven't mentioned, make sure to comment below so we can answer personally to each of you. And until then, travel safe.